Prime Minister. Did you like it, Mr. Speaker? Well, thank you for the applause, Mr. Speaker, because I move that this House express its confidence in the national-led government, commend its programme for 2014, as set out in the Prime Minister's statement, Mr. Speaker. This government starts the year where it left off, with a plan for New Zealand that we present today, with a sense of what is required for economic management, Mr Speaker, affordable, sensible and responsible, with a vision for this great country, Mr Speaker, and with a united, dedicated and committed team. Right. Mr Speaker, the opposition begins the year where they left off, desperate, divided and delusional. But Mr Speaker, mercifully they were quite quiet over Christmas, I have to say. David Cunliffe was very much like a white tiger. He was out there, but no one actually ever saw him. Russell Norman spent his entire summer break working out how he could get an invitation to go back to the dot-com mansion for the third time. And Haini Harawira took a public tour of Parliament to see what it's actually like. Mr Speaker, one thing that did happen over Christmas, though, was the opposition proved, I think, quite clearly that they should have gone to summer school when it came to mathematics or economics. Because, Mr Speaker, it's quite one thing when the Green Party wants to print money. But David Cunliffe's actually taken that to a whole new level. You see, he's gone right past the printing press, right past... Bitcoin, and he's now gone into imaginary or make-believe money. It's fantastic stuff. You don't have to borrow it. You don't have to print it. You most certainly don't have to earn it. According to David Cunliffe, all you have to do is spend it, Mr Speaker. And that takes you into that kind of interesting space of where the opposition is these days. As John Armstrong quite rightly pointed out in the Herald this morning, they're a bit of a tricky opposition. You need to actually read the fine print. You see, this is the opposition that last year wanted New Zealanders to believe that if they earn under $18.40 an hour, they'd get a pay rise under Labor. But it turns out, actually, on the fine print, it's actually only if you're working for a government department pretty much in Wellington. He wanted them to believe there was a billion and a half dollars just sitting out there mysteriously waiting to be spent. And yesterday wanted them to believe that for an entire year, if they had a one-year-old or less and they earned under $150,000 a year, Labor's new definition of poverty, they would get 60 bucks a week. But actually, when you read the fine print, they don't. They get it after the paid parental leave has finished. That's right. And they weren't rushing to say, David Cunliffe here to talk to you about my policies for the middle part of 2016. <laughs> it was like, vote for us and you get the money. Ah, well, they've gone from year now to year now, maybe. Read the fine print, Mr Speaker. They are Labor and the Greens. They are a high-spending, high-taxing government if they ever get there, which is good, because that is the only high the Labor and the Greens look like they can agree on at the moment, Mr Speaker. <laughs> Mr Speaker, let's go to this government and what it's actually achieved and what it's actually delivering for New Zealanders. The program today spells out where this government is going to go. But what's worthy of discussion is also where this government has been and who the New Zealand public actually trust with New Zealand. Because, Mr Speaker, it's this government, a national-led government, that's balanced the books in this country and will see us back in surplus by 2014-15, Mr Speaker. <laughs> Mr Speaker, it's this government that guided Christchurch through the tragedies of the Christchurch earthquakes, stood behind them week after week after week, making sure they had the support that they needed. Mr Speaker, it was this government that guided the country through the global financial crisis to a point where economic commentators around the world talk about New Zealand as the standout developed economy. 
Mr Speaker, it's under this government that 17,000 people left a benefit last year and 1,500 people a week leave a benefit and get a job. It's under this national-led government people are employed. Mr Speaker, it's under this government that ACC rates are being reduced for New Zealanders, for workers, for employees across the board, Mr Speaker, and it's under this national-led government that when we look out there at the crime rate in this country, we see it's at a 33-year low. And Mr Speaker, it's this government that can be trusted to roll out ultra-fast broadband. Now, I know David Cunliffe is saying he's going to close down Facebook. That's actually something that most leaders around the world haven't managed to do, but that's right. That was today's proclamation from David Cunliffe. He, fine print, he's going to close down Facebook. That'll be interesting. But, Mr Speaker, this is also the government with a track record that's seen an enormous increase in elective surgical operations available to New Zealanders. This is the government that stood up with a plan to, to prevent harm that has taken place in our communities against young children. Mr Speaker, this government and its plan is the reason that three quarters of a billion dollars will be spent this year in New Zealand looking for oil and gas because of this government. And actually, despite what David Cunliffe said about his newfound friends in Norway, it was Labor that had no rules in the EEZ, let alone tough rules. They had no rules whatsoever when it came to deep sea drilling. And last year, when we were in this house, they were the ones being critical, and all of a sudden, miraculously, that's changed, Mr Speaker. It's under this national-led government that housing will become more affordable because we have the right approach to, to fixing that issue, and that is the accords with the councils of Auckland and, and ultimately around the country. That is with making sure that new land is released, Mr Speaker. That is with making sure that there are refinements to our legislation, particularly over time to the Resource Management Act, Mr Speaker, to allow young New Zealanders to buy a home. Mr Speaker, it is this national-led government that stood up and is tackling the issues of teacher performance and principal performance so every young New Zealander gets a chance to succeed and to do well and to have a world-class education. That's what's happening under this government. And, Mr Speaker, under this government, Transmission Gully will be built like Waterview is. So, Mr Speaker, in the plan for the year, the government goes back to the four key points that it has been implementing for some time. To responsibly manage finances. That has got to be the top priority. And I say to New Zealanders who see these other political parties offering something, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. When David Cunliffe tells you he's found one and a half billion dollars at the end of a rainbow and he's out spending it, roughly, depending on whether you read the fine print, maybe, just maybe you need to ask where that's coming from. Because by the way, if you're earning $150,000 and you're in that category of poverty, according to Labor, you'll also have your tax rate going up year after year after year. And if you're a young couple who's buying the bakery in Harawa and you're trying to make a living under Labor, they'll put a capital gains tax on you because you're rich, because you're out there trying to create employment because you care about trying to get other people a job. And when they've done all that, and when they've spent like they did last time they were in office, if they ever get there again, Mr Speaker, we know what happens. Interest rates go up. The competitive part of the economy goes south. And a national-led government has to come in and tidy things up. And their heads are down over there for one reason and one reason alone. They know it doesn't add up. They know we're not even out the end of January and they've spent three quarters of a billion dollars with their mates, the Greens, let alone everything that happened last year, Mr Speaker. 
And that is what New Zealanders like about this plan and trust about this government, that in the course of five years, actually we have held government spending pretty much at the same rate, but we have prioritised what matters. At-risk New Zealanders have had working for families maintained, pensions maintained, accommodation supplements maintained. This government has reprioritised to ensure that happens. Mr Speaker, this government will also stick to its plan of building a competitive and productive economy. It will continue to deliver better public services and it will rebuild Christchurch. Mr Speaker, let's go through some individual bits of the plan. Because back in 2008, when we became the government, this is what the Treasury told us. The debt to GDP was going to 60% by 2020. Why? Because we were inheriting a bunch of the stuff we saw yesterday. Say anything, do anything to try and get there. Try and tell people you're doing them a favour with their own money until the music stops and you get booted out and someone actually has to come in and tidy the place up, Mr Speaker. Well, what does this year's plan show? It shows by 2014-15, we won't be a decade of deficits. We'll be back in surplus. We'll be back in surplus. Peak debt will have peaked at 26.5%, and by 2019-20, it'll be at 17%, 16.9%. Mr Speaker, New Zealanders take enormous confidence from that, and this government will work on repaying debt because we actually trust New Zealanders and they trust us to be able to take care of them when there is actual need. When a Christchurch earthquake comes, a strong government can stand and support. A profligate one, Mr Speaker, cannot. When it comes to competitiveness, this government will remain committed to the business growth agenda and to expanding export markets, and that includes trying to complete our free trade agreement with Korea, with Russia and with the Trans-Pacific Partnership countries, not the least of them being the United States. The Speaker, in 2014, this government will do something that other parties on the other side talk about but never actually support, and that is get behind the film industry. This is the government that saw over five... Well, she's shaking her head, Jacinda Ardern, but she was the Hobbit hater out there saying, don't create 5,500 jobs for the Hobbits. 5,500 jobs. And now we've got Avatar 2, 3 and 4 being made in New Zealand because of this government's actions. That's what happens when you have good government, Mr Speaker. Speaker, we are committed to smart investment. We are committed to making sure that science is at the heart of the government. We will continue the work with the Callaghan Innovation and in making sure that New Zealand firms and New Zealand businesses across the country have the very best science available to them. We will continue down the path of our science challenges and of our primary growth partnership and making sure we use science to make New Zealand a more competitive economy. When it comes to skills and in the workplace, Mr Speaker, this government will continue to do that and it will ensure that we reach our target that 55% of 25 to 34-year-olds have some sort of advanced trade qualification, diploma or degree by 2017. There will be an additional 4,500 places in the trades and services academies, and this year alone over 10,000 people will have access to youth guarantee, fees-free learning for 16 to 19-year-olds under a national-led government. Mr Speaker, when it comes to safety in the workplace, that will be a priority for the government this year. As we look through WorkSafe New Zealand to improve the culture in our workplace so that workers across New Zealand can go to their place of work confident that they will come home from their daily work. We will make sure that WorkSafe New Zealand works with those industries that need, uh, need support and need change and ensure that that takes place. Mr Speaker, we will make sure that ACC reductions continue to be delivered so that New Zealanders can pay less for their ACC. And when it comes to infrastructure, Mr Speaker, as I said earlier, work on Transmission Gully will begin. Work will continue on the Christchurch Western Corridor. Work will continue on the Waikato Expressway. Work will continue on Waterview, Mr Speaker, not from borrowings, 
not from borrowings, but in some part from proceeds of, of sales of minor assets in New Zealand companies that have deepened our capital markets. Mr Speaker, this party and this government remains committed to ultra-fast broadband so that every school in the country, every hospital in the country, it, three quarters of all of New Zealand homes can be wired to the world. We looked at, uh, with great amaze and uh, pride of, at Lord yesterday, but she is a great example of how New Zealand music was delivered over the internet. Joel Little himself said that they produced that music to give away on the internet, and in fact it turned her into a singing sensation. Mr Speaker, we'll carry on our work around housing and addressing those issues, and particularly Christchurch will remain an important part of the government's agenda as we have since the Christchurch earthquakes. Those anchor projects, the Justice Precinct, over a billion dollars going into schools and into housing. And Mr Speaker, when it comes to education, we won't say that the answer to fixing the whole problems in the education system is giving the odd kid a lunch. That's not actually going to fix the problems. What will fix the problem is paying $50,000 to a world-class principal to go in and fix up a school that's failing those kids. That's what's going to fix their education, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we're going to say to those teachers, stay in the classroom, share your expertise, be paid more for that. Be an expert teacher, go around the other schools in your cluster, or be an executive principal and expand that, Mr Speaker. And we're going to continue with national standards so that parents can understand the progress of their child, and we'll continue to work on the moderation amongst schools. Mr Speaker, we'll continue our work in law and order because New Zealanders feel safer under a national-led government. We'll continue with the drivers of crime and the rehabilitation. We'll look to strengthen and expand the rights of victims Mr Speaker, and legislation that makes it easier for, child, for children that are witnesses or for rape victims. We'll continue our work on cyberbullying. And as I said, Mr Speaker, when it comes to health, one of the top priority areas for this government, we'll continue to ensure that, that uh, patients are at the centre of what uh, we focus on in our, our health system. We'll make sure that they continue to get access to elective surgery faster, that we continue to make sure they have world-class and gold-standard cancer treatment, that there's more money for MRIs and CAT scans, and that we continue to make sure that people can feel confident in what we're doing. Mr Speaker, you can walk the walk or you can talk the talk. This is a national-led government that walks the walk. This is a national-led government that has shown through the last work of the last five years and will continue in 2014 that we're up for any challenge that is uh, uh, put, in our, uh, put before us and that we can meet those challenges and deliver a brighter future for New Zealanders. We're not going to sit there and try and bribe the electorate with imaginary money that doesn't exist. We're not going to ask people to read the fine print like a commercial contract when I give a speech at a school someplace in New Zealand. We're going to say to New Zealanders, you can trust what we say, you can trust us to deliver what we do. Mr Speaker, we're a good government, not a tricky opposition. Bring on to 2014. Yeah. Order. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr. Speaker, I move.